Hello. We'd like to thank all of our followers, all of you damn fine Foundation employees listening in from around the world. We know that life within a clandestine organization can be strict, intrusive, and downright dangerous. But remember, your work in the shadows saves the lives of those who live in the light. That sweet, non-lethal sunlight out there. I'm your host, DJ Skip, and your ears are listening to 93.3 FAM Radio. And today, we play our regular non-memetic kill agent theme music. We now apologize for the memetic kill agent we hid in the previous jingle. Those GOIs out there have been getting trickier, and we need to stay one step ahead of them. Now, on to announcements for this evening. We got a big list of them, and, well, that's what we're here to do. After the recent raids on several sites and sectors within the Foundation, an undisclosed number of SCPs have had to be temporarily relocated while their normal housing is resecured. For the time being, keep an eye out for any new additions to your site, as you may have some new neighbors in containment cells. You may want to go say hi like they did in the good old days, with a fresh pea camp eye and a loaded shotgun or tranquilizer rifle. You will also likely notice additional security brought in while the renovations are being completed. They are there for your protection, so don't make eye contact for too long. An announcement for all Foundation staff, regardless of security level, if you come across any D-Class personnel wandering around your site facility, call security and maintain a safe distance. You may even want to lock yourself in your lab or office until they have left the area. You never know what they might have been exposed to, and you don't know what you'll be exposed to by engaging them. Be safe and secure yourself first. A reminder to all researchers, it's still not too late to sign up your team for the Global Testathon. Collaborate with your fellow researchers and compete to complete the most experiments on an anomalous item in 48 hours. Expand our knowledge of anomalous objects and win prizes for new discoveries and the most creative experiments. See if you can beat last year's record of 201 experiments. With that, it looks like we need to get those D-Class personnel numbers up, up, up! So this week we will be having the Ring in a Drifter Drive to replenish our human test subject supply. Remember, this week, D is for Drifter. Please note, unwanted in-laws will not be accepted this time, so do not bring them in, even as a joke. In other completely unrelated news, the second annual 682 Rodeo Championship has been cancelled. In its place, a brainstorm forum will take place wherein personnel are welcome to submit any and all new ideas for how to destroy the unkillable lizard. At this time, the Brainstorm Forum would like it noted that Dr. Kondraki's suggestions are not welcome and will not be accepted. And please note that your ideas should be more developed than kill it with fire, shoot it a lot, or throw it into the sun. We already tried those, and we should all remember how well those worked. The forum will begin after a short memorial service for the hundreds who died at the first 682 rodeo championship held last year now for a related personal note of the day after 55 years of research dr bruce richardson iii is retiring from the foundation and i think you all know what that means dr richardson will be receiving his own custom gyapok fm's greatest hits the GYAPOK Counter Asian Initiative was founded by Dr. Phantom and is the alternative foundation funded radio station not hosted by yours truly. The hidden memetic agents there increase the productivity, lifespan, and general morale with a hint of compulsions to follow rules and procedure. Unfortunately, after not listening to the station for a few days, you may develop irritation, chronic headaches, insomnia, and worst of all, a lack of drive and lowered productivity. To combat that, this custom mixtape has been designed specifically for Dr. Richardson's brainwaves to slowly wean him off those soothing memetics without the pain. As for the pain of missing his Foundation family, well, we don't have a mixtape for that. We hope as many of you as we can spare can make it down to see him off. The retirement party will be held in the staff lounge of Sector 23. 
which is just past the temporary holding pen for 682 since the cancellation of the rodeo championship. Everyone in the sector is invited to stop by and grab a slice of non-SCP cake. An additional note to all personnel attending, you are advised to wear full tactical gear. Attending Mobile Task Force members are asked to arrive a half hour early to help set up a perimeter, and all security teams are to be on standby. We go now to our infrequent sports corner. Right now, the SCP Foundation Global Occult Coalition Interagency Charity Ice Hockey Game is underway over at the Sloth's Pit Ice Rink. All proceeds from tonight's game go to benefit the Foundation Widows and Orphans Relief, as well as the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. Now, in the third period, the score is currently tied at 0-0. It's anyone's game, and the stadium is tense with sports-related tension. Things have been off to a rocky start as five minutes into the first period, Foundation forward Dr. Jackman collided with GOC defenseman Agent Marimba at center ice, resulting in a high-sticking call for Dr. Jackman and an interference call for Agent Marimba. Coalition team coach Dulcimer objected to the two-minute penalty, claiming that Putting these guys in a box won't do anything in the long run. A permanent solution is required. And offering to eliminate both threats to the game using his sidearm. Foundation coach Dr. Bright took exception to this argument, claiming that Murder is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. He cited that the penalty boxes were insufficiently secured to contain the two players, noting they lacked electrified fences and any sort of mimetic kill agent in case of outside intrusion. Both coaches were ejected from the game for unsportsmanlike conduct and roughing an official. Whew, this is going to be a match to keep an eye on. More on the game as it develops. For those of you who missed it, Dr. Clef's seminar, Reality Benders in You, How to Survive When Existence Doesn't, will take place at 2 p.m. tomorrow in Seminar Room B. Those attending are reminded that all seminar rooms are weapon-free zones and to check your weapons at the door. This will be your best chance to get certified on dealing with reality benders and enjoy a gripping lecture by one of the Foundation's most... uniquest. Free muffins and coffee provided, so come hungry. Oh, wait. No, no, um, no, this says that uh, coming hungry is actually a requirement for attending the seminar. So do that, I guess. Uh, speaking of Alto Clef, to whoever keeps signing things with a pound sign followed by the American dollar sign, please stop. You are not Dr. Alto Clef, and no one recognizes your signature. <laughs> We've got some big news for you guys tonight. So, uh, so big, we're not even sure if we're allowed to talk about it, but here goes. The higher-ups heard about our broadcast during the universe-wide reset and said it was, and I quote, essential to maintaining morale high enough to keep personnel from resorting to their primal animal natures. They have recognized us here at Foundation After Midnight Radio as more than just a third shift radio station burning the sweet midnight oil and have decided to give us more funding. With it, I've gone ahead and upgraded some new equipment, added more security measures, and secured what I'm second most excited about, my new APR, Andrew Alexiev. That's not my official title. That's assistant slash possible replacement Andrew Alexi for you folks unfamiliar with broadcast terms. He's here to learn how to handle the broadcast in case anything happens to yours truly. As we know, and are reminded of every day, life is fleeting, and we could all disappear from existence before we were even born. Technically, sir. Please, no, call me Skip. No need to be formal. Technically, Skip. I'm here to help transcribe the broadcast and to fill in for you in case you finally decide to take any of your amassed sick days. I'm glad you're taking this job so seriously, Andrew. Always remember, if anything happens to me, you are next in line for the throne. You mean the rolly chair? (laughs) Oh, it's more than just a rolly chair. You'll learn. You'll learn. So, Andrew... You're new to the Foundation After Midnight family, but how long have you been with the SCP Foundation? I've been with the Foundation for f***ing years. Was that... 
Was that just redacted? Yep, you get used to it. So, to let the fine folks of the Foundation get used to hearing your voice, how would you take the next segment? The mic's all yours. So, hey, uh, everyone. Uh, next up, we have a new section to improve interpersonal relationships. We give to you Foundation Missed Connections. To the one with the gun named Martha. Dinner on me? Male for female. To the red-haired female agent I saw in the mess hall on Saturday at 12.30ish, thank you for buying me lunch. I lost my wallet, and you were kind enough to buy me something to eat. I was starving. Sadly, you left before I could even get your name. You told me a little bit about how you used your gun. I think you referred to it as Martha? I'd like to know more about you. I'm stuck in the labs mostly, so maybe you can tell me some stories about the outside over dinner. It's on me. Please meet me outside Site-19's mess hall at 5 p.m. on the 21st, this Sunday. You saved my life, and I don't even know your name. Female for female. During the last containment breach, I was the researcher who got trapped under the falling debris. You were the black-haired security guard who unloaded your gun at SCP-13... Am I allowed to see these live? Okay. Who unloaded your gun at SCP-1305, also known as the Cat Lure, to draw it away from me. Without you, I'd know I would have been turned into one of those things. I would enjoy the chance to at least buy you a drink or dinner sometime from the site cafeteria, so please reply with what SCP-1305 said just before you shot at it. I hope you remember me, male for female. I'm a researcher at Site Redacted. You were working with me on Project Redacted. I'm the one who was able to redacted when the redacted went redacted. I hope this message will help you remember me, because I really think we had a thing. The number to contact me is, of course, redacted. Good luck, my friend. Meet me for pizza, female for male. To the person who used SCP-458, the never-ending pizza box, on Tuesday the 13th, prior to 1.30pm, I thought I was the only one who enjoyed pineapple and anchovy pizza on a wheat crust with white sauce, but after discovering the remains of your lunch set in the waste disposal unit, I have discovered that I am not alone in my strange preference for pizza. I would love to meet up for lunch. Please meet me in the Site-17 cafeteria tomorrow at 1.30pm. We can share our unique tastes and maybe something more. I'll be wearing the yellow tie and the black-rimmed glasses. Let's hang out sometime. Male for male. Hey, most people know me as SCP-076-2, but some call me Abel. Again, are you sure we can say these on air? Are you positive? Okay. I'm here at the bottom of an elevator shaft at Containment Area 25B. I was trying to find the operative who beat me to death with a fire extinguisher in Japan last week. I was kind of thinking, I don't know, we should hang out sometime. You know, do battle... Reminisce on foes defeated in combat, restart Pandora's box, nothing special. If you're interested, reply with the method I used to kill your commander. We interrupt our current segment to bring you an update I've just been handed from the SCPF GOCIA. You know what? The SCP Foundation GOC Interagency Charity Ice Hockey Game. We have received word that Global Occult Coalition goalie Baritone Sax has received a game misconduct and ejection from the game for illegal equipment. It seems he was wearing a powered armor white suit under his goalie pads. This was discovered after a miscalibrated servo caused Mr. Sax to propel the puck at supersonic speeds across the ice, smashing through the glass and injuring an innocent cashier while attempting to clear the puck. More on this game as things develop. It's really heating up out there. So, did I do it right? You did just fine, Andrew. Just fine. I remember my first time in the air. You'll get your wings. Now, I'll take it from here. Okay, well, I'll just be over here then, transcribing everything. You didn't, by chance, transcribe what I just read, did you? Nope. Not a word. Of course. Well, I'd better catch up then. An update on the personnel note of the day. It seems the shockwaves from today's big hockey game are being felt even at the retirement party for Bruce Richardson III. Due to rising hostilities between the Foundation and the GOC in the stadium, 
several high-risk SCPs are being transferred from their current containment wings to the facility bunkers, which happen to be located right next to the staff lounge, which happens to be where the retirement party is being held. I hope during this time the good doctor is enjoying being surrounded by some of the best and brightest the Foundation has to offer, while also being surrounded by some of the deadliest, most horrific abominations the Foundation has to contain. For as we all know, the best part about Foundation Party is Foundation Party don't stop until the containment breach goes off. (sighs) If you are helping with the transfers, you are invited to swing by the retirement party when you're done. Remember... Just go out to the cafeteria and take a right at the temporary holding cell being used to hold SCP-682, the unkillable lizard. Just head towards the party music trying to drown out the sound of claws on metal and you'll find it. Uh, Worth noting is a quick list of some of the other Keter and Euclid class SCPs currently being moved to the temporary holding cells. This includes a pack of SCP-939, various instances from the body horrors of SCP-1429, and SCP-1616, otherwise known as Nibbles the Hungry Hamster who can fit anything in his mouth. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm pretty sure everything will be just A-OK with the retirement party, but uh, now that I've read all that out loud, I think I'm going to make a phone call. While I do that, we have a very special recording for you today, my fine Foundation family. With our new funding comes new security clearance, and with it, yours truly got a chance to interview the one, the only, SCP-1761, the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams. Please enjoy. Tonight we have a very special interview with SCP-1761-1. The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams. How are you doing today, sir? The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams boasts of a glorious day. How is the Republic of the Arnold Fitzwilliams this time of year? At this time of year, the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams experiences wonderfully mild temperatures. The mountainous regions of North Fitzcota are a wonderful destination for skiers the world over. And on the southern shores of Fitzsylvania, temperatures at this time of year are often in the mid-70s. Sounds like the place I'd want to go. More information regarding tourist destinations in the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams can be provided. Since you've advertised it so well, if anyone came to visit the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams, what are some festivals or activities going on at this time of year? At this time of year, there is the National Fitzwilliam Jazz Festival that takes place in the capital, New Fitzwilliam City. Seven days of impromptu jazz improvisations by some of the largest and most popular jazz musicians of the world. That sounds really impressive. (laughs) If you do not enjoy jazz, there is a folk art festival all month of what we are calling Fitztober. All right, so we got a little bit of something for everybody. Do you have a lot of tourists in the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams? The Board of the Interior of the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams is very proud of our tourist relations. If you wouldn't care, going on to a bit of history, when was the founding of the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams? Tradition dictates that Arnold Fitzwilliams, the head of the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams, was granted immeasurable government bureaucratic power from the divine lord Arnold Fitzwilliams at the beginning of time. What is formally recognized as the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams in its current iteration was incorporated by a decree from Arnold Fitzwilliams in... Redacted. So since so few of our personnel here at the Foundation get to go to the beautiful, talented Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams, Could you uh, share with us some of the documentation, or could you bring some of the history to us? The formal currency of the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams is the Fitzwilliam dollar. Current exchange rates for the Fitzwilliam dollar rest at for every Fitzwilliam dollar. As you can see, the economy is very strong and a priority of the Fitzwilliam government. In my pocket here, I have my wallet, if I I hear, um, of about U.S. dollars. May I exchange these for uh, Fitzwilliam currency? 
you may. The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams gladly takes your redacted dollars and exchanges it for these seven Fitzwilliam dollars. Thank you very much. For the audience at home, could you describe to me what I'm looking at here? You said this was a seven Fitzwilliam dollar bill. Yes. Fitzwilliam dollars are printed on money that is similar to the American dollar bills. It feels very similar, yes. It is printed in denominations of one, five, seven, and ten thousand Fitzwilliam dollars. That seems to be an odd jump. Uh, could you describe why the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams has made such radical choices in bill types? The Fitzwilliam Federal Exchange has determined that in order to keep down inflation, only six ten thousand Fitzwilliam dollar bills are printed. When a new one is minted, an old one is burned. Because the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams cares about each of its citizens, the bills are both color-coded and different sized, so that all people, even the blind, can participate in the economic process. One Fitzwilliam dollar is five inches in length. A five Fitzwilliam dollar bill is six inches in length. A seven Fitzwilliam dollar bill is eight inches in length. And a ten thousand dollar bill is three yards long. Those seem to be impressive bill sizes, and once again, the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams proves itself to be a very progressive country. The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams boasts of its strong currency, which is accepted in all places around the world. So hopefully I'll be able to get something at the cap of this. <laughs> the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams makes no statement at this time about the economic proclivities of any other nation. I think that'd be fair to say. But could you describe the beautiful artwork that is on here? This is truly a beautiful dollar. Can you just tell the listeners what we might be seeing on this bill? The portrait on the front is of our president, Arnold Fitzwilliams. On the reverse is a portrait of the first lady, Arnold Fitzwilliams. This is a very beautiful dollar. There seems to be a lot going on. The numbers are practically lost in here. Oh, yes, there's the, the seven at the top left corner there. It's good that there is a size denomination or decoding. On the back side, there appears to be um, a, a battle or some combat going on here. Could you describe what this is? Yes, this is a scene from the most glorious instant in the Fitzwilliam military history. During the Battle of Fitzwilliam Independence, the terrible armies of agents declared an unprovoked act of aggression against the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams. Oh, you're speaking of Incident 1761-1. Yes, I believe that that is how you define this war. So after Agent Redacted. had declared an unprovoked declaration of war against you, what happened then? The specific actions of the Fitzwilliam military are a closely guarded state secret. I can say, however, that victory was swift, and it was unquestioned and unconditional. If I remember correctly, a uh, Delta event had occurred, and a SCP-1761-2 had appeared, and uh, went into hand-to-hand -hand combat with Agent Redacted. It is, is this how the Republic State of Arnold Fitzwilliam's history records remembers it? No. At this time, Colin McKinney, the international representative of the Fitzwilliam Department of Defense... Uh, SCP-1761-2C. Yes, Colin McKinney. He was the one who was chosen to represent the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams to negotiate the surrender. All right, so this is uh, Colin McKinney we are seeing on the back of the bill. Is this correct, then? Yes. He seems to have been depicted with Adonis-like pectorals and ab muscles. That would make any man cry. It was a very glorious moment in the Fitzwilliam history, and it's one on which we are very proud. On the opposite side of Arnold Fitzwilliams, on the, uh, the president's side of the bill, we have a mixture of symbols. Could you describe what I'm looking at here? Yes. The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams has many state symbols and images that we hold dear. The national bird is the tiger. Now, you said national bird. Bird. Um, tigers are mammals by nature. You misunderstand. It's merely a name. You see this bird in the corner. We call that a tiger bird. Is there any relation between the two, whether ferocity or color? Because this is a purple bill, you cannot see the darker colored stripes along the tiger's stomach. All right, Furthermore, the claws are amazingly sharp. 
I had thought that that was just simply a caricature of the creature. This is the actual size of the claws of the tiger bird? It is. The claws make up roughly one-third of the tiger's body. As it appears in the Great Seal, the tiger is carrying in one claw a scroll with quill, representing our commitment to knowledge, and in the other, a ball and chain, representing our need for order. Now, a ball and chain, wouldn't that give a negative connotation as to slavery or containment? The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams formally requests that you not use the word containment. I will strike that from the record. I uh, I apologize, but this does um, this does go back to my question, though. Doesn't that give a negative connotation? The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams takes issues of justice very seriously. As such, the only ones with need for fear of these negative connotations of which you speak would be criminals. So the um, the tiger bird here on the bill is. Absolutely terrifying, and I don't think anyone here would want to run into one of those. Also on here is a monument of some kind. It seems powerful. Yes, a national monument that symbolizes the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams is probably our most famous. It's the obelisks. The obelisks are a monument to the Fitzwilliam commitment to order and justice. Physically, they are four obelisks, each connected with heavy chains, and each one held aloft by the people. And this gives a powerful imagery, but it also seems to be a bit of oppressing and putting fear into the citizens. It is a national monument. It is intended to be a little threatening, like your gigantic American presidents on Mount Rushmore. Well, that's usually too... Put in patriotism and hope, this seems to be oppression and threatening intimidation. Their furious gaze watching over every person in the nation. Would you say this is threatening? I would say it's more of a, um, a brother looking out for you, while yours seems to be a, uh, a teacher with a ruler ready to slap a few wrists. The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams has no prepared statement. Well, it looks like I'm getting the red light here, so that's all the time we have, according to our Foundation uh, diplomat here. So we're going to have to say goodbye to the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams. Thank you for coming in today and telling us a bit about your amazing country. For more information, please do not hesitate to contact the Fitzwilliam Department of the Exterior. We'll be sure to do that. Because the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams maintains an open border... All visitors are welcome to enter. If you wish, the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams is willing to extend both citizenship and amnesty. Would you care to apply for a visa right now? I'll have to politely and respectfully decline. Thank you very much. The Department of the Exterior for the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams patiently awaits your return. With that, we would like to say thank you to the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams for giving us your time to tell us about your wonderful country. We'll have to come visit sometime. Again, all are welcome to come into the Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams. And we're back. I've just received word that the Foundation GOC Interagency Charity Ice Hockey Game has ended in a shootout. Literally. Witnesses are unclear as to who drew their concealed firearms and opened fire first, but all agreed that both sides were responsible for the extensive damage to the Sloth's Pit ice rink, which is now riddled with bullet holes, several grenade craters, and a burning, melted Zamboni. After a daring but foolhardy attempt by Coalition players to use the ice cleaning machine as a makeshift armored vehicle. Harkness Manchester, the owner of the ice rink, has stated that the Foundation and Coalition are no longer welcome at his facility and that neither agency will be getting back their $700 security deposit. On the bright side, it has been estimated the Foundation GOC Interagency Charity Ice Hockey Game has raised... Um... Okay, then after taking into consideration repair costs and the loss of the security deposits... About 10 bucks! Ah, hold on. Uh, Well, I guess this is as good a time as any 
to talk about our backup fundraising event, the Keter Cake Bake Sale. We have 237 cakes of various sizes and flavors that must go. Literally, we need to get rid of these cakes in the next 24 hours. As mentioned before, we are low on D-Class personnel who typically consume these cakes and are a tad short-handed today, so come and eat some cakes! I don't care what your diet says, just please consider this your cheat day. There's a type of cake for everyone at this bake sale, and we've got all sorts of cakes, from boom kuchen to miniature cupcakes. There's a cake with your name on just waiting for you. Well, okay, there's... Okay, there's actually a cake here with your name on it. If your name is, let's see, uh, we have Rebecca, Roth, Patel, Tyrone, and Juan left. The funds go towards the original charity cause of the hockey fundraiser event, the Foundation Widows and Orphans Fund, as well as the United Nation International Children's Emergency Fund, as well as to cover the cost of the ice hockey fundraiser event. Get your cakes before they replicate. Oh, gee. Well, as we wind down, it's time for music by personnel. We have a segment here by junior researcher Kix entitled Mimetic or something. Why, why did I just do that? I know that's the title. Hold on. We have a segment here by junior researcher Kix entitled Mimetic or something. Well, that, that shouldn't actually be a mimetic, but, or, well... At least not in any sort of dangerous way. Remember, if you would like to have your music featured in our show, reach out and email us at scp93.famradio at gmail.com and let us know who you are. And now, please listen in for a medic or something.
In other news, Dr. Bruce Richardson III's retirement party went off without a hitch. Sorry from those of us who couldn't make it, Doc, but from what I've heard from the mobile task force operatives afterwards, the cake was delicious and the decorations fun and delightful. Have a happy retirement and enjoy that greatest hits tape. Just as a reminder, we are still taking suggestions for the new name of the softball team formerly known as the Unkillable Lizards. With a new timeline comes a new name, and the team still needs your help in deciding a new name. If you have any ideas, call in on our hotline at 512-93-RADIO. That's 512-937-2346. And, um... Hmm. I, um... Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what to say here. I've, uh... I've never really made a call sign... Uh, well, we we typically went until my recorder's battery died or some cataclysmic event stopped us, but now that we have funding, I guess that's not so likely. Security measures to keep us going in the even the event of a containment breach. End of the world should be about the only thing that could stop us, or... Hmm. Well, uh... Thanks for listening. And a big thanks to our new APR, Andrew. And uh, I guess good night or uh, good morning for those of you coming into the first shift. I'm DJ Skip signing off. This concludes Foundation After Midnight Radio, episode 05. Play it backwards to your completely new episode. FAM Radio is written by Kyle Stover and Eric Stover, a.k.a. Toy King 07. Kyle Stover isn't Toy King 07, Eric Stover is. Kyle doesn't have a screen name, he's a loser like that. Produced by Toy King Studios, the voice of DJ Skip is done by Kyle Stover. The voice of SCP-1761-1, The Republic of Arnold Fitzwilliams, is by Mark Dodson. The voice of APR Andrew is done by Stefan Carollo content is based off the SCP Foundation Wiki and is released under the Creative Commons 3.0 license. As best as we can, inspiring articles and authors have been credited in the description or on the Facebook page. Special thanks to Dr. Clef for the SCP Foundation slash Global Occult Coalition Interagency Charity Ice Hockey Game Bit. A big thank you to Hambling for the Foundation After Midnight Radio intro music. This episode's music, a medic or something, was created by Kix. Their music can be found on their SoundCloud account with the link in the description. Collaboration is a huge part of what makes the Foundation community so great, and this project is no different as we get our inspiration for the series from all across the fandom. If you'd like your work in an episode, whether it be musical or written, please reach out to us. We also invite those up to the challenge to use and remix our own recordings and characters into something new. Be it a comic, a recording, a game, whatever. We'd love to see what you create. Questions? Mail of fans? Have a proposal for the softball team formerly known as the Unkillable Lizards? We'd love to hear from you. Email or call us at scp93.famradio at gmail.com or 512-93-RADIO. That's 512-937-2346 for the hotline. We do have a hotline. It's a real thing. Check it out. To support us in future episodes, check out the descriptions we post and follow the links we provide. There's cool stuff there, and fun stuff there, and things we need you to check out. Special thanks go out to our Missed Connection segment contributors, James Gibson, Agent Mac Lloyd, Dr. Sage Algeria, and Roth. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. For those of you on iTunes, be sure to leave us a review and give us a rating so that the world can know how we're doing, and if others should check us out or not. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.